your, uh, you can keep your camera off and nobody will know who you are. Um, so again, welcome everyone. Uh, this is our third training session and our biggest one, which is, which is great. Thank you all for coming. Um, start off with um, when is all of this going to start? Um, the week of April the 4th, which I believe is a Monday, is when you will begin your contributions to Nationwide. Uh, the schedule will be on March the 16th. The plan will go into what's referred to as a blackout period. So in a blackout period, there will be no contributions or withdrawals or, um, or anything along those lines. It's just the plan just kind of settles. Um, so it will enter into the blackout period on the 16th of March. So any contributions, the last contributions that can go into the Empower slash Prudential, EC Benefits will need them on Friday, March the 10th. And then we will process them up through the 15th. And then the plan will enter the blackout period on the 16th. And then on, I believe it's the 21st of March, um, all of the assets will, will be liquidated and then cash will be transferred from Empower credential over to Nationwide, and then Nationwide will then reinvest all the funds again, beginning on the 21st and or the 22nd, depending on how the bank transfer goes. Um, and then it will give um, credential, excuse me, Nationwide a few days to purchase all the new securities, allocate things back to the individual investment accounts again, and then we will open it up for contributions for the first week of April, which would be Monday, April the 4th. You might, it might be open a, a couple of days before that, but we feel comfortable on releasing the April 4th date just to give it a couple extra days there um, to do everything we need to do. So that is the schedule and the timeline. So you'll start all of this on Monday, April the 4th that week. So any contributions that would be due between March 16th and Monday, April 4th, you just hang on to those and process those into Nationwide then on April the 4th. Kevin, April 4th to Tuesday. I'm sorry, April the 3rd. Thank you, Doug. Monday the 3rd. Thank you. I'm going off my memory, which is can be faulty. Uh, so April the 3rd. Thank you, that Monday. All righty, I will turn it over to Cindy Davis, Cindy Davis, who will now walk us through the process um, and she'll share our screen with us. And um, yeah, and Cindy is with Nationwide and Cindy will be your contact at Nationwide. She is behind the email address new plan at Nationwide. Um, so you can always get a hold of Cindy and uh, with any questions that you may have. And pardon me, my phone is ringing. Go ahead, take it away, Cindy. <laughs> okay. Let me pull my screen up here. All right. Are you guys able to see the website? It says login for plan sponsors. Mm -hmm. So this is where you will go to access the nationwide website to process contributions. Um, I will have directions for you on how you will set up your username and password. Um, you will have a unique code or number assigned to your church location. So I will provide that to you and then I will provide you instructions on how to set up the username and password. And then um, you'll go to the nationwide.com forward slash plan login. And that is where you will log in to the plan to process contributions. Um, so that is, is coming. I should have all of that information out in the next few weeks. Um, so that way you guys can start working on getting those established. If you need any assistance, I can help you with that, getting you walk through getting that set up. Okay. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to go into the website and we're going to talk about how we process the contributions into the plan. Um, so we're going to do that under the payroll section. So we'll be in under payroll. And from here, what we're going to do is we are going to go over to add new payroll and we'll click this little drop down and from the drop down, we will select manual. Okay. And when that comes up, it's going to give us some options here. Now on yours, you can go ahead and just leave everything checked in these first two groups. There's not really anything that you'll need to do with that. Yours will not have this section on here. Mine is a demonstration plan, so it does have a little bit of an extra section. You will not need to do this step. It will already just have your church location there for you, okay? 
your payroll frequency will already be in the system. Um, so you won't need to do anything there. You can just leave it on the all. And then under add remove columns, we always have name and status selected. You don't need any of the additional fields. So there's nothing to do there. And then under the compliance testing, we do require hours and compensation. So this add to plan and anniversary hours and add to plan and limit salary do need to be selected. So if they are not checked off already, we would wanna make sure that we are checking both of those items, okay? And then under additional items, we are not going to make any selection in this section. So this should all be blank. And then at the very bottom under the employer contribution and employee contribution, we are going to select elective deferral. And elective deferral is for the pre-tax deferral. Um, for the demonstration plan, this plan has matching listed. Yours will say church contribution. So if you are doing the church contribution, you will wanna make sure that that is selected. So we're gonna pretend that matching says church contribution for our purposes today. And then if you have anybody that has elected to do the Roth elective deferral, so that is the option that is the after tax option, you'll want to make sure that you check the box for the Roth elective deferral. So you could potentially have the elective deferral, which is the pre-tax, and then we're pretending our matching here is the church contribution. And then if we also had the Roth, you would have that selected. You only need to select the ones that you are going to be submitting for that pay date, okay? Any questions on this initial screen here? Okay, so from here, we're gonna click continue and it's gonna take us to the next screen. And this is where we are going to select our payroll date. So we want the date that the um, employees are receiving their paycheck. So we'll just pop the calendar up and I'm just gonna pretend I'm working on, for, on the one for this Friday. So I'm gonna pick the 24th. And you'll notice the payment method is already defaulted to an ACH. So that will already have the banking information that we have on record um, for your church location. So there's nothing you need to do there. And then down here, the list always does sort in social security number order. So if you do have more than one person, you may want to switch it to name and then it will sort it in alphabetical order by last name, okay? And then on this screen, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna enter in that information for this pay date. So um, we're gonna just say that Patrick, wanted to defer $150 for his employee pre-tax. So we're gonna put that in there. And then um, this pay date, he also decided to do $50 Roth, which is that after-tax option that is available. And then we also have some church contribution going into his account. And we're just gonna say that that was $100 for this pay date, okay? Now you'll notice I do have all of these in. However, I have not gotten my continue button down here at the bottom. It hasn't turned blue. That is because we do have to remit hours and compensation for the pay date. So you may not track actual hours. Um, so you would just, if this is a bi-weekly pay schedule, we're just gonna list 80 hours and that is fine. It does not have to be exact. And then we will want the gross compensation um, in this field. So it'll be that gross compensation for the pay period. And now that we have both of those items entered in, you'll see that now we get our continue button and we'll be able to move on to submit the pay date. Um, the one thing I did wanna point out with this that you do see, you see this little orange caution and this is because we are in a demonstration plan and we do not have an investment set up for the individual that is listed here. Um, you should not be seeing this message because we should have investments set up for everybody. Um, but just to let you know, it is not going to prevent you from processing anything. 
It just means that individual is going into a default fund choice that is set up for the plan. So it, don't be alarmed. Um, but most likely you are not going to see that on your side when you go in to process your pay dates. But I always like to point that out um, because it does pop up here. Okay, any questions on the information that we're entering in on this screen? I have one question, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, so your, um, your salary, your gross compensation, I assume that's federal gross. Uh, no, actually, that would probably would be state, Cindy. We would want to include, or excuse me, Jennifer, we would want to include mm -hmm. the um, housing allowance in that. Mm -hmm. What there are is Nationwide has some tools out on the website to kind of help with retirement planning. You know, basically your gross compensation is X, you're saving Y, this is your percentage in your income replacement and retirement projections and that type mm -hmm. of thing. So, um, you know, the housing allowance is a... Um, part of the compensation that a pastor would need to replace in, in retirement. So we would want that number to be probably on the state side, which would include the housing allowance and or the parsonage furnishings allowance. Okay, thank you. Yep. I have a question. Yeah. So we pay by um, twice a month. So what would you like in your hours there? Um, so if you're twice a month, it, the 80 hours is fine. Okay. That is totally fine. I know okay. a lot of times hours are not tracked. It's not, um, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. That Thank is you. Fine. Yep. Okay. Um, and then if you are on a bi weekly schedule or a semi monthly schedule and you are remitting employee contributions, so the pre tax or the Roth, you want to make sure that you are doing it per pay period. Um, and then I know some with the church contribution are doing that on a monthly basis, and that is totally fine um, because that is a, a, a contribution coming from the church. It is not an employee um, contribution going in. So if you are just remitting that church contribution once a month, you can still do that. Um, it will require you to put in hours and compensation. Um, for that one, if you're doing it, you can always just put one hour and one dollar or a penny in um, for the salary. So just kind of to note on that, um, it is okay if it is not exact, um, but you'll have to have something in there in order to remit it if you're just doing the church contribution, okay? So question on that, I've always sent my check-in monthly. You want this done every pay now. Yes, if it has employee deferrals in it, so if it has pre-tax or the Roth, we need yes. to do it um, per pay date. Got it. And yeah. then is it okay if if we if we just split the monthly match in half and do the yes, match? Yes, you can. Time? Yeah. Okay. So if you want to do that, or if you just want to include it on just one of the pay dates, Got you it. can. Or if you want to split it in two, you can do that as well. Yeah, actually, okay. per the EC benefits bylaws, it the the monthly contribution from the church should be remitted once a month, and it's by the fifteenth of the month. By the fifteenth. All of the okay, uh, So but, you want the match? You want the match once a month? The withholding every pay. That that would be the ideal way to do it. Yeah. Yep, following the rules. Yep. Yeah. Now, Jet. Now, Cindy is also going to tell you a little trick how you can actually mm -hmm. schedule things in advance. Yes. So yeah. even though you're doing, you really only would need to log in one time, and then you could yeah. make both contributions. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> you're you're uh, stealing my surprise. <laughs> Okay, so from here, what we'll do is um, we're going to click continue because we've got everything in. We've made sure our numbers match for this pay date. So we can go ahead and click continue. And this is going to take us to the verify and submit your changes. So it's just basically just going over the information that was entered in on the prior screen. So it's going to total everything up. So if you had more than one person, it's going to add everything together for you. Um, so it's just going to let you know this is what's going in for your pre-tax deferral. We had some Roth dollars. We also had the church contribution. We're going to have $300 that's going to go for this pay date. We're adding 80 hours and $2,500 in compensation to the plan records. And then it will have your bank account information listed down here. And it's going to show the amount that's going to come out 
um, via ACH from the bank account. Okay. And then down here, this email notification. So if you would like to get a confirmation um, for the payday, you can add in your email address. You can add in multiple email addresses. So if more than one person needed to be notified that this was processed, you're able to do that. You would just enter a comma and then add an additional email address in there. Um, in here, you can also add additional comments. So if there was a special note that you wanted to put about the pay date, you could add that in here. Neither of these fields are required to submit the contribution. They're just additional items there um, for you to use if you would like. Okay. So any questions on this screen before we move on? Okay. So then what we're going to do is we are going to hit submit. And that is going to process the pay date and you're going to get this success, the payroll batch, and it's going to assign a payroll batch number. And it's going to let you know that it has been submitted. Okay. And then we are going to see that pay date down here in our list. So it says 224. And right now it is in a held status. While it is in a held status, we do have the ability to make a change. So maybe after I sent this in and I got to looking at it and then I was like, oh gosh, I, you know, my amount is off. I need to fix that. I'm gonna go right into actions. I'm gonna hit the drop down. I'm gonna select edit. And that is going to bring me right back into the pay date. You will get a warning message, just click okay. And I realized that this should have been $55. So I'm going to update that amount. And then it will update the total. And then we are just going to click on continue. And it will take us to that same verification screen, but I'll just double check that that does say $55 instead of 50. And I want a new confirmation. So I'm going to send myself a new confirmation. And I'm just gonna put a note here, um, updated Roth to correct amount. So that way I know why I'm getting a second confirmation for that pay date. And I'll click submit. And then that's going to update. And now we'll see that it does say a total amount of $305 for the 224 pay date. Um, it will stay in the held status for a few hours that day that you have remitted it. Once it goes into the processing status, you will lose that edit function. At that point, you'll just need to reach out to me and I can correct it on my end. Um, you'll just lose that ability to edit or to delete the uh, contribution out of the system once it gets into that processing status. And then from here, if you are doing semi-monthly or you have a bi-weekly schedule and your numbers stay the same, this is my favorite feature. We are just going to go out here under actions and we are gonna grab copy. We're gonna click on copy. And what it does is it pulls that information that we entered in from that prior pay date. It's already here. And the only thing that we need to do is go up here and we are going to change it to the next pay date. So we had the 24th, we are going to go for the 10th of March. We got that updated, nothing has changed. So that was all the same. If something does change, so maybe if the compensation was a little bit different, um, you can make an update if you need to do so. But if you don't need to change anything, you just hit on continue takes you to that same verification screen. You just make sure that everything still matches up. You can put in your email notification and click submit. So right now we've got our success. So we know that it's saved. And then we see it down in here in our payroll list. So we have the 224 pay date. We have our March 10th pay date already out here ready to go. Um, you can pend a payday out 30 days. So that's where if you do have that biweekly schedule, 
you can go ahead and get everything set up in the system. And the nice thing about it is that it will wait until 310 to process into the plan. So it's kind of a set it and forget it. Um, so if you do have numbers that see the same, you can go in just once a month, get everything set up, um, and it will automatically process through and there's nothing else that you would need to do um, for that. So that's kind of the, the how you process the contributions in the plan. Um, would anybody like me to run through those screens again or do you guys feel a little bit comfortable with it or any questions that you've thought of? I have another question. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll give you my background. I'm a CPA, so I'm like crazy with making sure I do everything okay. right. I try yeah. to at least. So um, just back to the blackout period. So my thought process is um, I'm going to do payroll for uh, the last pay in February on Wednesday. So if I get that check for the pension mailed out that day, that would definitely be the by the March 10th. And then mm -hmm. the March Oh, well, that's not going to work, though. So what about my March 15th payroll? You can either send that to us early so we have it by the 10th, or, you know, and then we can process it, or you just have to hold it. it so, so would it be all right that the first time I go in there, you get all the marches in the computer? Yeah, yes. that'll be fine. Yep. Okay, you see what yes. I'm getting at? I was worried about the one. Okay, so yeah, all the marches I'll do... April 3rd, and then after that point, starting in April, I'll do it every pay. Yeah, Perfect. it might be a few days before April 3rd. Um, okay. It might be the following week, but yeah, and that's just a practicality of moving okay. a plan from mm -hmm. one provider to another. Yep, 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 got, got it. it. Yep. So so, yeah. so starting, um, yeah, so starting in April, then it'll be every pay. All yep. right. Gotcha. Yeah, but the ones that we are, if we do have to hold any for March, when we do go to enter them in the system, I recommend doing it by the pay date it applies to. And that's just so that way for tracking purposes, if you have to go back and run a report to double check to make sure everything was remitted, then we can actually pull it by that pay date just so to do, make sure instead so do, of bumping it all into one. Okay, yeah. so do them separate for March, even, yes. though, even though it's all gonna be in the same time frame as in April. Yep, got yes. that. Yes, please. Yep, Can thanks. you repeat that please? Oh, yes, four. So it, it's for, for yeah. proper record keeping, you would want to do the, your contributions by pay date. So if you have a pay date that falls between March you know, 15th and April 3rd, mm -hmm. you want to process that the first week of April, but then use the pay date of March you know, 17th, 18th, 20th, whatever mm -hmm. the pay date is. Yeah, and when you enter it in, if it is a past pay date, it will process that day that you put it into the website. So it'll go through really quickly. Um, and it's just it's just easier to track if you have to go back and kind of double check that accounting um, to make sure that all the pay dates for the year were received for it. Um, I did want to show you what that email confirmation looks like that you'll get. Uh, so I'm going to bring that up um, on the screen here. So I just printed a copy of what the email looks like. So this will come from no reply at ds.nationwide.com. So it is a generic email address. Um, it's not something that you could respond back to, um, but just to kind of know that. And then it's just going to have information about the pay date. So um, it's just going to let us know what the current date is the date that we entered in for the payroll period, our total amounts, the hours and compensation, and then how we are funding that pay date will be listed in here. It is not going to have any personal information um, for the individuals that you remitted the contributions. It's just an overall total of what was done for that pay date. So that's something you are able to keep if you need to keep a copy. Um, for your records. Okay, any additional questions? And obviously when we get out um, in April, if something comes up and you have questions or if you just want me to hang out with you for the first few that you do, just let me know. 
um, we can always schedule time and I can jump on and just kind of be there for support um, to go through to get it get it submitted in the system. I just want to make sure that you are comfortable with the process. So if we have to do that for a few times, that is totally fine with me. Um, just let me know if you need me, okay? All righty, any other questions? Uh, just uh, you will be receiving another email from um, Cindy or mm -hmm. Nationwide, whoever that would be with your login information. Yes. and the website to log into um, that'll come out closer to the april 3rd or so date um, mm -hmm. after the plan is in the blackout period so then just follow those instructions to create your account online um Mad now, kevin who sets that up the pastor or the treasurer it depends on who's going to be doing the contributions um i do we i've had conversations with a couple already that in which you know the the treasurer may not be comfortable doing this they may not have you know the comfortable with their computer skills the pastor can make their own pension contributions uh the key would be that the treasurer gets the bank statement reviews the bank statement says yep there's the pension contribution doug did the right amount he didn't add an extra zero to it or anything and then you also have that email notice. If the treasurer does have notice, when you make your contributions, if you need to go in and add and add that person to the email notification list, that treasurer, so they get a copy of it, that is an option to do that. Um, I know some churches, this, this is a new process for them and we'll make some allowances so it gets done. Yeah, and the affiliate form that Kevin sent over, if you have not completed that yet, I will need that. Um, I do need that in order to get your information set up for your church. So that way I can provide you your um, church number and then also the directions on how to set up your account access. Um, so on that form, it will ask who the contact will be. Um, so that is the person that it will be responsible for going into the website and remitting the contribution. So you just want to make sure that the correct information is listed there. Um, and then you'll also list your bank account information for the ACH. And then once I have that, um, you can send it over to the new plan at nationwide.com. And I will email you back to confirm I received it. And then that's the information that I'll use to get everything set up in our system here. And then we can get out uh, the username and password, how you get that all set up. Um, if I don't have that, you will not be able to access the website because I won't have you set up yet. So just to kind of know that is something that I do need if you haven't turned it in yet. Would you be able to give me your email address? Yeah, my email address is newplan at nationwide.com. So it's N-E-W-P-L-A-N at nationwide.com. And then I can also give you my number because you can just call me directly if you need something. It is 614-435-2032. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, did anybody else think of anything? Um, sorry if you hear my little guy in the background, but... Um, we um will we be getting one of these email conversation confirmations when the payment like processes or when we process it in the system? It will be when you process it in the system. So like these dates I did um, we did for the 24th and the 10th, but I already received my confirmation. It's letting me know that I already put the request in. Um, but if it is predated, it will not process until that date. So that is when you will actually see the ACH come from the account. And it may be a day or two after that pay date, because I know sometimes an ACH takes two business days for it to go through that entire process in the banking system. Okay. Okay. The forms that you said, uh, about us receiving with the information and the ACH and stuff. Were they sent out already? Yeah, they, they were, were sent out. Oh my goodness, two weeks ago now. So you didn't get yours, Tanya? Yeah. I did not get mine. Okay. And you're with um help help me out. What church again? Uh Clark's Valley. Clark's Valley, that's right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm like now. All right, Tanya, let me uh send that out to you again. I'll send it out to you today. 
Um, okay, it would have gone to you, would have gone to Mike, and it might have might have also been the the, the late delegate as well. Um, but yep, not a problem. Okay, okay. thank yep. you. All righty, hearing no other comments. Thank you all again for uh, for uh, for attending. Um, Cindy gave you her contact information. Uh, Dave and I will also be available to answer any questions. Um, as the plan administrators, we, we we will have access to everybody's account to to be able to help you if if anything pops up, any uh, any anything bad would happen. Um, we can most certainly jump in and help. Um, if you would like to go through another training again, we have another one next Tuesday evening, the twenty eighth at six thirty p.m. Uh, mm -hmm. Just let me know, and I can send you the Zoom link again if you're interested in in, in attending again. So thank you all again. Appreciate it. If there are no other questions, have a great rest of your day. Kevin, I do have just one question. Yes. Uh, it's, Mary, it's Mary Jane. I Mine's fairly easy because I pay once a month. So I typically send everything in at the end of the month. So just to verify, at the end of February, I can still send it in under the old process and then the end of March send that in the beginning of April. That is correct. You got it. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Thank right. you. You bet, Mary Jane. Yep. And Mary Jane, you might be able to pend two months at a time, um, okay. just depending on the date that you select to send okay. it in. So if it does stay the same amount for each month, you should yeah, still be able to just go out every other month to get stuff set up in okay. the system. So Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day, and we'll uh, see you whenever. And um, play. If you have any questions, give just reach out to Cindy, I, or Dave. Thanks.